Destiny family and welcome to Destiny's midweek Bible study lunch date with Destiny. I'm so glad y'all are here and I got to tell you I could hardly wait to get here. I'm so excited about the series that we're on, series that we're teaching and I count it an honor and a pleasure every time I stand up here to preach the word. I thank God for it. I thank God for you. Hey, let's go ahead and make some announcements and we're going to jump right into the word. First of all, welcome and thank you for connecting and if this is your first time connecting with us, if you're a first time guest, first time viewer, uh, please, if you would, text the word welcome three, three, to 336 203 8586. And of course, thank you for tuning in. And our services are open. We're open on for our Wednesday afternoon Bible study, 12 noon. I've got some friends here with me today. So good to see y'all. Thank y'all for coming so much. And, of course, on all of our, uh, our platforms on social media, live streaming, of course, and in person Wednesdays. And that, by the way, is Wednesdays at 12 noon. And this service will re-air tonight, this evening at 7 p.m. And hit that little share button. Stop playing. Hit that little share button. If you're watching on Facebook, like, share, follow. Like, share, follow. And then, of course, of course, on Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. is our worship and word service, and that re-airs at 3 p.m. on Sundays. And, of course, you can tune in via Facebook, my Facebook account, Lee Stokes, or our YouTube, Destiny, at, uh, Destiny account, Destiny GSO, um, on YouTube, as well as our website, DestinyGSO.org. Or you can always tune in to our app, Destiny GSO. Y'all know the GSO is for, for Greensboro, Destiny Greensboro. And uh, so connect with us. We're here. We want you to get this word. And there's nothing more important. This is your weapon in these last days. This is your armor. The word of God is, and we're here to give it to you. Make sure that you get it on a consistent basis. Praise the Lord. Also, also, also. Uh, Destiny, uh, let me see, let me get that right. Destiny University is offering several classes. Of course, our financial peace class, at Grief Share, and Marriage on the Rock. And the class dates and times are located on our website, www.destinygso.org, for more information. You want to get your money up, you want to get your marriage right, and if you're going through any type of struggle with loss, get in our Grief Share class. Every single week we've got classes right for you that will bless your life. Also, on Sunday, October the 17th, we will be celebrating all of our Destiny pastors. Oh, praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Special love for pastors Lee and Trudy. Here I am. See, typically somebody else would read this. I didn't read this beforehand. So, uh, it's, uh, Pastors Lee and Shanae are celebrating 26 years of marriage on October the 22nd. Y'all, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I was, I, I told Shanae, I said, listen, uh, I'm tired of this Atlanta every week and I'm tired of Columbus, Ohio. And I'm ready for a vacation, but it doesn't look like we're going to get a time away this year. As you know, Shanae and Trey are in Atlanta every single week working, uh, and they come home on the weekend. And of course, Shanae is still handling uh, her mother's passing away their estate and all that over in Columbus. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to be alive. All right. A special card and gift box will be at the table in the back. Let's pour our blessings for these awesome leaders. Praise the Lord. Also, baby dedication will be held on Sunday, October the 31st. And uh, you can register on our website or contact Pastor Tina right here at the office. What is this? D Kids, we are desiring to open the children's ministry pre-K through fifth grade. We need volunteers to, uh, to be able to open. And we have a big trunk or trunk or treat event coming up Sunday, October the 31st. After service, we need volunteers for this as well. And if you can host a trunk, please see Pastor Takima immediately following the service in the foyer. Praise the Lord. Also, girl time, ladies. We are, or y'all are, come on, somebody, <laughs> not we. Y'all are wearing, that's ladies, that is, pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month on Sunday, October the 24th. And also, Thanksgiving boxes. Girl Time is collecting food for, uh, food items for Thanksgiving boxes for those in the community that have need uh, for assistance this year. And we need your help to feed these families. And you can make a, you can make a monetary donation, donation or pick up the list in the foyer at the girl time table uh, or go to our website. Hey, by the way, thank you for your faithful 
tithing and giving y'all know that it is a principle in the word of god it's how we keep the lights on it's how we do everything that god's called us to do and most importantly it's how we operate in the system the financial system of the kingdom of god is by sowing our seed and it is just as the bible is the instruction manual for life that's a part of it. Amen. And uh, I, I want to thank you in advance for your faithful tithing and giving your support to our ministry. And uh, the ways to give online are at, our, at destinygso.org. That's on our website, always there. Or you can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 336-344-7088. Or you can always mail your t uh, tithes, gifts, seed, and offerings to P.O. Box 16065, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27416. Or if you're here in the building in person, you can always drop it off or mail to our actual building address at 2401 Randleman Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Or you may call the church office for your secure debit and credit giving praise the lord and if you're here in person you can always use those methods as well or use the offering receptacles y'all see i don't know if y'all see that yeah y'all do <laughs> at, at each of the door exits amen let me pray for you let's get ready to get in the word and let's pray y'all ready Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your health. Thank you for your wealth. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your protection. Lord, we're grateful to be alive, but to be alive in you, Lord. We would have it no other way than that our life is hidden in you. Lord, you're our righteousness. You're our peace. You're our provision. You're our protection. Without you, we can do no thing, nothing. But with you, we can do all things that pertain to to what we need to get done. So we thank you today for your word. We declare body be healed in Jesus' name. Every muscle, every joint, every eye, every ear, every heart, every internal organ, I command you to live and not die. COVID-19, you can't have us. Arthritis, cancer, you cannot have us. We are the redeemed from the curse of the law. We are the blessed to be a blessing. And we will live and not die and we will live to experience and see the great exploits of the Lord and I declare that we will live to be caught up together in the air with the Lord in the rapture us and our loved ones I decree and declare it in Jesus name if you're in agreement with that say amen amen, amen. again I'm going to be teaching on uh, end time prophecy I'm uh, that's all I'm studying right now is just going through the Bible and pr uh, prophecy end times we are closer than ever before and there is nothing else scripturally that we are waiting for to occur other than the rapture and it can happen anytime i'm going to be showing you that from the scriptures explaining it you're going to understand how to why you should keep your head up and why you should be excited in these times and how you're going to miss the wrath that is coming to the earth that seven year uh, period of tribulation you and i will miss i'm going to explain it all from the scriptures in the upcoming weeks very soon very soon beginning on Sundays and again the series that we're on on Wednesdays is is absolutely relevant for the times that we're living in we're on a series on Wednesdays today we're on part three winning against the strategies of the devil do you have your Bible let me see y'all got your Bible hold it up in the air and let's make this faith confession real loud and strong together ready say it this is my Bible come on God's word to me I am all it says I am I can do all it says I can do, and I have all it says I have. As I put these words in my heart, keeping them on my lips, then shall I make my way prosperous. I shall do wisely and have great success all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. As we started, uh, uh, to, today is part three, and we started this series called Winning Against the Strategies of the Devil. And really, this is going to go right in line with what I'm going to begin teaching on Sundays uh, about our uh, just living in these last days and understanding the times that we're living in, how to, uh, what is expected of us as believers, how to make it through these times, what to expect as we see the pandemics and the wars and all the stuff. I'm going to explain all that. I'm going to use news articles. I'm going to show video. I'm going to show all types of things on Sundays to let you know that the time that we're living in and, and uh, how we should, what we should expect as believers during this time. Praise the Lord, and I'm excited about it. And so we are seeing activity, um, you know, that the Bible describes 
these last day type of activities. It is just an uprise in, in activity of the devil. It is evil like we've never seen before, violence like we've never seen, pestilence and disease like we've never seen before. And all these things are preludes. They're that time of persecution, this great falling away that the Bible describes in, in, uh, in the scriptures. Uh, that happened all right before the rapture. That happened all right before the rapture. So uh, what we're living in is, is a very evil, unique time, unique time. Uh, and so we just have to be prepared as believers and understand the times that we're living in. So uh, part three, winning against the strategies of the devil. Today, specifically, I want to talk to you on this topic, lions, serpents, and scorpions. Winning against the strategies of the devil and the, de and the Bible, uh, it, thank God for the word of God that gives us insight to the strategies of the devil. We have an enemy. We found that out in part one and part two that we do have an adversary. We have an enemy. And so we want to understand his strategy so that we can 100% of the time thrive and not only just survive, but win against his strategies. Amen? So turn over in your Bible. Let's go. Turn over in your Bible to J John chapter 10 and verse 10. And of course, we just, I just want you to know that there is an enemy that, you and, that we have as believers that hates you. We showed this last week. But look at this, John chapter 10 and verse 10. I love it in the Amplified Bible. Jesus says this, the thief, talking about the devil, comes only in order. This is the only reason he's come, to steal, to kill and destroy. When there's any stealing, any killing, any destruction in your life, it is from the devil and not from God. And this is one of the keys of the devil. He always wants, he, he, his greatest weapon is stealth, secrecy. He makes it look, whatever's going on in your life that's negative, that's killing, that's destructive, that's stealing, wants to make it look like it's God or someone else or your fault or whatever the case. But he's the one that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. That is his agenda. Look what Jesus says his agenda is. I came that they may have, not only have life, but enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Anybody want that? If people knew that's what Jesus was all about, the whole world would want him. And again, this shows us that the devil is a liar. He's a thief. And so that's what we're understanding his strategies. Turn on over in your Bible to Luke chapter 10. Again, just reviewing real quickly a couple of scriptures, verse 17 through 19. This is important. As we talk about the devil, I don't want you to get so devil-focused, you know, that uh, because everything isn't of the devil. A lot of things are of our own accord, a lot of things. And so we don't want to get all spooky and weird, but we do know that we have authority over him. <laughs> when you know who you are in Christ, he's terrified of you. And uh, uh, here in, in Luke chapter 10 and verse 17 through 19, Jesus sending out the 70, 70 di disciples he had. And he said, and then they, verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I love this passage because clearly Jesus is letting us know that we have authority over the devil. But the Bible says he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And look at J uh, James chapter 1 and verse 5, uh, uh, chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. There it is, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 tells us some more instruction about how we handle and deal with the devil. Look at this. A few things in this passage. Be sober, be vigilant. Be sober. What does that mean? Being of the right mind. Being of the right mind. And then being vigilant just simply means get on the offense. Do y'all remember before 9-1-1, before uh, September the 11th, uh, back in 2000, that people, we weren't vigilant at the airport. You could just walk in. There was no, they didn't do all that scanning stuff. I remember sitting on the airplane and the, the door where the pilot sit would be open. You don't see that anymore. You don't see that anymore. Why? Because we've gotten vigilant. Why? Because we realized there was an enemy that's after us. And that's exactly what this passage is saying. There is an enemy that's coming that you may not notice if you aren't sober, if you aren't watching for him, if you aren't keeping attentive about it. And that's what the Bible's saying. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil. So we see here a couple other things, that our adversary is the devil. It's not the white man, the black man, any face. If you put a face on your enemy, you got the wrong enemy. 
Amen. Because your enemy, watch this, your adversary, the devil, walks about. So we see that he's on the prowl. We see something that he's not sitting dormant. He is on the hunt, right? He walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And today I want to dig in a little bit deeper because we see a lot of things in here. The Bible says he's seeking whom he may devour. Notice it doesn't say he's seeking whom he can devour. It is a matter of permission, a matter of us understanding and giving the devil permission. He needs access to, in order to devour you, right? Like a roaring lion, a, a lion, I don't know, I, I, in preparing the message this week, I just looked at some of those videos of lions attacking uh, antelope and deer and animals, and I learned a lot of things just by watching that. And, and they don't come and just kick, lick on those animals. They devour them. They devour them. The devil does not just want to play with you. He wants to devour you. He wants to destroy your life. And the Bible says he's seeking whom he may devour. So that says that we can become as believers undevourable if we understand his strategies, if we're sober, if we're vigilant. Amen, amen, amen. So let's, let's jump right into it. Uh, we covered last week just talking about one, one aspect of him being a lion. And we talked about that out of Proverbs, how he wants to get... He, he always operates in deception and lies, but he wants to get you under condemnation. Today, I want to dig in a little bit deeper and just understand his approach and his strategy. Um, I, uh, I've never been to Africa. It's not on my, uh, on my bucket list, but it's on my wife, so I guess I will be going. Praise the Lord. I see Nancy go, went uh, a couple years ago and loved it. Praise the Lord. It just doesn't sound that exciting to me. I, mean, I don't take that personally in any kind of way. Uh, and, and I and I, I hear it's a beautiful. You can stay in beautiful resorts and all that kind of stuff. I'm just not that excited about uh, safaris and all that kind of stuff. You get what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. Uh, but anyway, I imagine we will go at some point uh, if the Lord tarries. But uh, I did look at some videos and I heard a, a, a person talking about it uh, about their. They, they went on a trip there and they were there for three weeks, and uh, they talked about uh, being in the being in the safari for two weeks. And uh, he's a preacher, and he's, he was explaining some things that he understood about uh, lions. And, uh, and he shared some very important things, and I want to share some of that with you. Three, three important things he said about why the Bible talks about a lion, like a, the devil being like a roaring lion. Number one, uh, and this is the same thing with, with many snakes and with some uh, scorpions, nocturnal. Y'all notice this way, if you ever go to the zoo or if you ever see, uh, lions are just laying around sleeping in the daytime. Come on, somebody. You see, if you go to the light, you knock it on the glass, like, I wish they'd wake up. Nighttime, they do wake up. <laughs> they, they are nocturnal. They have great eyesight at night, and they are hunters in the night, active at night, very lethargic in the daytime. One of the keys that the devil uses is he, the darkness is the devil's domain. Darkness is the devil's domain, and the Bible has a lot to say about it. Darkness is the devil's territory. When we get in, when we decide to live in darkness, we're on the devil's property, and he has great access to us there. So again, one of the things I want us to understand is how strategies that he uses, he operates, and uh, his domain is in darkness. Turn over to Ephesians. What does the Bible say about this? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 15 in the NLT. New Living Translation. Come on, y'all ready to learn? Look at this, because we need, we need to understand how we attack so we can uh, not become prey or victim. I've seen many people's lives as a pastor, really just for 20 years. I've seen lives devoured. I've seen marriages devoured. I've seen children devoured. I've seen, I've seen lives devoured over the last two decades, just as a pastor. Are y'all with me? I've seen it. And I, and I would say there's one consistency with, with many of the lives that I've seen devoured. One main consistency is they don't take this serious. They don't take this serious. You get what I'm saying? Not sober, not vigilant, but casual. And, uh, and here are some main keys that we've got to understand as believers. Watch this. Here we are in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 15. Let me read it. In the NLT New Living Translation. Listen with what Paul writes. He says, for once you were full of what? Darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. Look at this. So live as people of the light. Next. 
For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. The devil wants to get you in darkness and wrong thinking. And that's what the, when, when the Bible talks about darkness, it's talking about a lack of understanding. It's talking about doing things outside of the way that God does them. Amen? For this light, verse, uh, verse 10, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. In other words, find out what's truth, what's light, what's right. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord, verse 11. Verse 11, take no part in the worthless deeds of what? Evil and darkness. God goes with light and understanding. The devil thrives in the domain of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. That's a very good key. Go to the next one. It's shameful to even talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. In secret. Look at this. Verse 13, but their evil intention will be exposed when? When the light shines on them. When light shows, it exposes darkness. Have you ever lifted up a rock? Maybe as a little boy. I know I did it as a little boy. Lift up a rock or a piece of wood that's out in the grass, and you see all this, this moist soil, and then you see a bunch of maggots and worms and all this stuff. As soon as the light hits on them, boy, they disappear. And that's what the Bible's saying here. If you'll put light on areas of darkness, it dissipates. Lightness, you can't turn off darkness, you just turn on light. So look at the verse 14. For, uh, for, the light of every, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you what? Light. When you get born again, the Bible calls Jesus the light, light of the world. And it calls us lights of the world. Amen? Amen, amen. Verse 15. So be careful how you live. Look at this. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. I love this passage right here because it's contrasting light and darkness. And then it, then it goes on and calls darkness foolish. Light, wisdom. And so again, we get these major keys to walking in light and walking in darkness. Walking in light is just walking in the ways of God. The Bible is simply the instruction manual for God, how God has made us to live. And whenever we veer from those ways, we start moving towards the darkness. And that's the devil's domain. That's where he thrives. That's his property. That's his area. And it's real hard to rebuke somebody off their own, off their own property. When you get in those areas, when you live in those areas. Now, let me make this real plain. We all miss it in sin. As believers, all of us, all of us. All of us have to deal with sin. Stop being so deep. All of us. All of us got one issue or another or more that we deal with. But the key is not living in darkness. Living in light. And then all of us strive against sin. Have issues with it. Be it lust, be it alcohol, be it drugs, be it whatever your thing is. Whatever it is, the key is make, have that struggle in the light. Run to God with it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First of all, turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Just flip back a page or two. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 24. Watch this. Paul writes again. He says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Next having their understanding darkened. Remember what we talked about last week, how this main battleground is in the mind. It's in your thoughts, having a darkened, darkened thoughts. Darkened thoughts are just simply the wrong thoughts that are contrary to God's thoughts, thoughts that are contrary to God's word. And that's where the root of it is, right? Having their understanding darkened, being, look at this, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Having your thoughts wrong will alienate you from the life, the joy, the peace, the abundance, the provision, the health of God. Just having the wrong thoughts. Having the wrong darkened thoughts because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Are y'all seeing that? Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. That uncleanness is a reference again to sexual uh, to sexual uncleanness, uh, sin. Are y'all with me? Go to the next one. But you have not so learned Christ, right? He said, that's not what you learned with Christ. That's not what you learned in the light. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. 
So again, we're seeing the remedy and the antidote for this darkness of the heart and the mind is getting the right thinking from the truth that's in the word. And we'll focus on that next week. But watch this, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be, be renewed where? In the spirit of your, in your mind. Again, this darkness starts in your thinking. Wrong thinking, wrong actions, living in darkness, getting in bondage. So it starts in darkness in our thinking. And darkness in your thinking is just simply thoughts that are contrary to the ways that God says it works. Amen? Verse 24. And you put on the new man, which is created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Is there one more that I'm going to read here? Let me look. No, that's the last one. All right, so y'all see this? Again, we talked about that last week. The devil's territory is right in your thinking. It's your mind, but it's darkness. Getting you in the wrong thinking will get your life in the wrong direction and put you in bondage. Again, we all struggle with sin in some level, but we don't live in sin. We must struggle in the light. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? As a believer, as a believer, yes, all of us will miss it. All of us will have different struggles in life, but we just don't throw in the towel and say, well, this is the way it is. I'm just going to succumb to this homosexuality. I'm just going to succumb to this, and Lord, now you're just going to have to, uh, I don't believe that anymore. No, no, now we're getting on the devil's territory and living in it. Now, all of us may have different type of struggle, struggles, be it alcohol, be it lust, be it whatever, but the Bible is saying if you're born again, make that struggle in the light. Bring it before God. Are y'all listening to me? Look what the Bible says about this in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. It's something about when you bring all of your issues boldly before the Lord. He knows anyway. But when we hide it and keep it in the dark, that's what gives the devil more. We're on his territory. If you run and say, God, help me with this situation. Don't run from him. Run to him with the issue. Are y'all with me? If you're married, run to your spouse with whatever issues. You're, you're totally transparent with them. You get it? So there can't be any secrets in hidden places. Look what the Bible says here. I love this. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15 and 16. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. We all have them. But was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Look at this next one. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of judgment. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. The throne of grace, isn't that good? Is anybody glad that we've got that God is on a throne of grace and not on a throne, throne of judgment? Amen. Why? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. What is the Bible saying here? And over and over in so many scriptures, the Bible is saying all of us will deal with shortcomings and weaknesses and sin. We all live in this earth suit. Everybody. There is nobody exempt from sin and the consequences of sin. Nobody. What we have to do is run to him and get out. Of, don't stay on the playground of darkness. Run to the light with him. And there's so many passages about that. But do you all get what I'm saying right there? Second, second thing uh, that this pastor was saying about uh, lions is that they must. Now, he used this term called, and he said, I'm making this term up, but I noticed this. He says that lions have this pair of vision. And he says, I don't even know if that's a word, but what that, what that meant was, he said, when we were all sitting in a, in a uh, Range Rover, in a Land Rover, big Land Rover Jeep with everybody, he said, there was a whole den of lions, uh, what do you call them? I can't remember the name of it. But, you know, it's a whole pack of them together. What is that called? Is it a den? Pride. A pride lion. That's the word. A whole pride lion. And he said, and they were walking around the car, circling it, and they had killed some animal, and we had driven right up and were watching them. It says, and they got up and they walked around, the, some of them got up and walked around the car. It says, but, and the, and the guide told us, as long as you stay in this car and don't move, they see the car as one and everything in it as one. You get up and you stand up and make yourself apparent that you're not a part of this group, they will single you out and kill you. And told a story about a, uh, another group who had, somebody did that, got, got up and stood up and the lions attacked them. And the whole point that he was making is they have to try and separate you from the group. It's, and if you're with a group, they, can't, they, they don't see the individuals. They see the whole group. And if the group is too big for them to attack, they, don't, they won't mess with that. And you see it. I see it on those shows. Those, those shows. They're looking for the one that's straggling along the side away from the whole group. When there's a whole bunch of them, they just watch. But when, do you all get what the importance of what, the, what 
God is showing us here with lions. To get, it's important for us as believers to stay in a group. Lions want to separate the weak from the group. This is why I know this pandemic is of the devil. Church attendance is at an all-time low in this nation and around the world because of this pandemic. And many people have not heard the word since last April whenever they closed things. Are you with me? And have gotten in the habit of that. Are you with me? And this, again, feeds to this getting away from the word and getting away from the truth which the devil loves and which is necessary for him to destroy your life. Uh, look at some passages. Turn over to Hebrew chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, NLT. Strength is in the group. Strength is in the group. Are y'all with me? Staying together as a group. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. It says, let us think of ways, I'm reading it from the NLT, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let's come up with ways to encourage and motivate one another with acts of love, encouraging each other, good works. Look at verse 25. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. What Paul's saying here is the closer we get to the end, you need to get closer to church. Get more in church. Be in church more. One of the keys is to get you separated from the word. Now, again, I, I get it. Uh, there are many people who are, you know, who are higher uh, or higher risk of COVID and all that sort of thing. Do whatever you got to do. But the key is get the word. But I have noticed this, y'all. Can I just be frank with you? I've noticed when I turn on the football games, is packed with no masks. Come on, somebody. Parties, I see people doing parties. I see all kinds of stuff online, but I look around church and I see church is empty. Come on, somebody. That tells me that there, that's a trick of the enemy right there. Come on, somebody. Hey Amen. Turn over to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. We know that there's strength in numbers. The Bible talks about, here it is in, in Matthew 18 and 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Two together are better than one. You need a prayer partner. You need someone to pray for you. You need, you need someone to encourage you. We need that as a body of believers. Are y'all listening to me? We need that. Your kids need that. We need that. Amen. And particularly in these last days. Oh, my God. Amen. But James chapter 5 and verse 16. James chapter 5 and verse 16. Y'all learning? James chapter 5. Look at this. Confess your trespasses. Who? To one another. And pray for one another. Again, the Bible continuously encourages this togetherness, this togetherness of the body of Christ. Praying for one another. Look at this. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another. Why? That you may be healed. Healing is, a, is attached to this togetherness. There's an anointing that's, that's greater in the collection of the body of believers. Look at this. The effect, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. But do you all see the, the togetherness there? One of the strategies. So the first strategy is this nocturnal. Nocturnal. The alliance, the devil about, who goes about as a roaring lion in the darkness, thriving in darkness, wanting to separate you from the group. Number three, lions are territorial. Come on, somebody. Y'all know it. Cats are territorial, too. Come on. Y'all ever it, walked into a house where they, where they got cats? Come on, somebody. And if you got cats, not your house, but everybody else's. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Them cats will spray that house down. You can tell it as soon as you walk in. I remember Shanae and I, when we were looking for the house we were in right now, we walked into this house, and it was in, it was in lovely area northern shores in a beautiful area and we walked in the house is beautiful you pull up everything was, was gorgeous till you walked in it was beautiful on the inside till you said "Ooh, they got cats and it's like i don't care how this house looks uh, let's go are y'all listening to me why because them cats don't uh, you know what they uh, lions are the same way they're territorial and they their roar is to intimidate i saw some videos where they were just their roar is so loud. If this roar is to mark their territory. This is to intimidate and, and to cause fear. And this is how the devil does. He wants to intimidate and cause fear. Look over at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, excuse me, chapter 1 and verse 7. Look at this. Here's something you need to understand about fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. 
Do you know that human beings are not born with fear? They develop it. God doesn't give you fear. The devil wants to get you fearful. Now, there is good fear. There's good fear. You know, uh, I think babies get this fear of falling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but if you, if you get them early enough, they'll fall. They'll, they'll, they'll crawl right off of anything. You, they'll fall. But God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. If you've ever experienced fear, you'll know that it's paralyzing and that it stops you from moving forward. I find that a lot of fear is connected to your, to your promised land, your promises, your call, your assignment. Y'all get what I'm saying? Afraid to do something. Why? The devil don't want you to do it. He wants to have, you, have fear on you so you don't do the thing that God's called you to do. A fear, a fear of speaking, a fear of going forward, and you know, fear of failure kind of thing. But God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. Whenever you get fear of, of things that you should do that are, that are right to do, no, it's not from God. You have to separate that fear. My fear. It's not your fear. God didn't give you that spirit of fear. It's the devil trying to give you that spirit of fear. But what has God given us? The spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And all three of those things are your forces against fear. A power. Remember, we already read it. Uh, we read it over in, in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Uh, he said, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Exousia. The same word as power, exousia. But that word right there is dunamis. Uh, he's given us ability over fear. Why? We've got power against anything that the devil has and authority and love. We've talked about that oftentimes, that love casts out all fear. First John talks about that. And a sound mind. When you think right and know right, there's a lot of things you don't have to be afraid of. The devil is one. Failing is one. There's a lot of things you and I fear just because we've been told the wrong thing. And a sound mind is that sober thinking, that right thinking uh, that's in line with God's word. If God created us and how we're made, he knows what's going to cause us to thrive. Wrong thinking and, a, and, a, and an unsound mind will put you in fear. Come on, somebody. Look over in your Bible. Look over in your Bible. Hebrews chapter 12, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Watch this about fear. The devil wants to get you afraid, get you in fear. Oh, this isn't going to work out. So-and-so had this disease. I could die of that too. The, you know, COVID had, it's, it's killed all these people. It could kill me. The Bible, truth will, fear, will, will shield you against that kind of fear. Psalm 91, if you know all those passages in, the, in Psalm 91, you'll realize you shall not fear the terror by night, the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that lurks in darkness, or the destruction that lays waste at noon. And although a thousand could fall at your side and 10,000 at right end, it won't come near you. When you have the right information, the right truth, are y'all with me? Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Are y'all learning today? Look at this. Inasmuch, oh, I love this, I love this. Inasmuch as the children have, uh, have partakers of flesh and blood, right? We are in flesh and blood. He himself, with a capital H, Jesus. He himself likewise shared in the same, in the same what? Flesh and blood took on flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, watch these next words, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Do you know that fear, and, and the Bible calls here the ultimate fear, the fear of death. People aren't afraid of flying, they're afraid of fly, uh, dying while flying. <laughs> People aren't afraid of heights, they're afraid of dying while up high. It's a fear of death that puts us in bondage. And if you read uh, over in, in Hebrew, uh, no, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about he's defeated the last enemy in his death, and that is the fear of, of, of death. Death, where's your sting? Death is no longer has any power over us. Come on, you and I, come on, anybody want Jesus to come? I mean, yeah, I want him to come. You get what I'm saying? I don't want to die because I don't want to leave my family, but I'd like for all of us to go up in the rapture together. Come on, asambate. But you get what I'm saying? I'm not afraid of dying. You don't have to be afraid of dying anymore as a believer. Are you with me? You can get on a plane. And, and what the Bible teaches us is to face those fears. Do you know that in the armor of God with, with death, uh, with facing the devil, there's no armory for your backside? There's no armor for the back. It's all front armor. <laughs> Why is that? Because you should face your, your fear of the enemy straight on forward. There is no running from him. In fact, running from a... <laughs> in fact, he said this uh, uh, about lions. He said, the guy told him, if you face a lion, don't, don't run. Don't run. Face him right on because 
it's going to be a battle of whose territory it is. If you let him know it's your territory, and you, you come on, somebody, he's looking to see if you're going to run. He's, he knows it's his territory, and you just become prey. Are you all with me? And this is why the battle of the armor of God is all front armor. It's front. You face it head on. Are you all with me? Amen, amen, amen. All right. Satan also in the scripture. So do you all get that? Nocturnal, separating the prey, and territorial to get you intimidated with fear. You have nothing to fear from the devil. When you know who you are and what your rights are, when you got the right information. Come on, somebody. And you know that he's going to try to get you off track. Watch this. Y'all notice that the devil is depicted as a serpent in the scriptures? Look over at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. And then we're going to look at the text. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 in the Amplified. Y'all seen this? Now the serpent, the devil chose a serpent to, 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 to attack man, to deceive man, but through a serpent, a snake. Y'all with me? Uh, why? Because the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, Satan, said to the woman, can it be that God has said, all right, that's all. I want you to see in verse 1 that he, I'm going to read this whole text and show you how subtle, how stealthy is. This is the main secret weapon of the devil, that he's stealthy. Most people don't understand or recognize when they're under attack of the devil. Why? Because he's as a serpent, as a snake. Uh, around our back, in, a, in the back of our house, uh, mom knows it, people who've been there, we've got all these it's beautiful, but it's a bunch of, bunch of cover, like uh, these shrub that stay close to the ground and covers, you know, you got to clip it back. It, 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 like, I don't know what it is. It, but, there's, but there are snakes and animals that live under there. I am positive of it. I am certain. <laughs> are y'all with me? When the times that we have seen snakes come out and snakes end up in our, in our swimming pool, you got it? But they come out from the, they come out from these little shrubs. Are, 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 they're hiding under there. In fact, our dog, uh, Trey's dog that we have now, we saw him one day sniffing around over there. It was like, uh-oh, something's going on under there. And he could hear it and see it and, and know what's going on. It, I mean, from little wood, what are those little chipmunks? And, you know, they all climb into this, these, this, this shrub stuff. Why? So you can't see them. Are you all with me? And they're subtle, they're crafty, and that's the thing with the snake, and that is the devil's number one weapon. It is stealth. He'll be there but you, and doesn't want you to see it as him. Doesn't want you to recognize that he's the one causing problems, and we're going to see this consistently. It's, uh, the same thing, if you watch lions, they're stealthy when they're under attack. The same thing with scorpions. They're nocturnal and stealthy. Are you with me? You roll up on it, and it's too late. Same exact thing. That's the, the commonality. But watch this. Uh, look over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. This serpent. This serpent. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, Paul writes, he says, But I fear lest somehow, the, as the serpent did what? Deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Are you kidding me? Did you see that? I fear lest somehow the serpent de who deceived, as, as he deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may, may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. What is the Bible saying here? Christ is real simple. The devil is going to try to complicate matters. All types of foolishness, foolish philosophies Colossians talks about. Let's dig in a little bit deeper because I want you to see, give you an example of what he's talking about here. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 26 and 27. Remember, we were reading out of Ephesians chapter 4 earlier. And this whole context, chapter 4 and 5, all talk about, or getting to this point right here, uh, about walking in sin and walking in areas of darkness. And watch what he reveals here. I love this truth right here. Watch this. Are y'all there? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27 says, Be angry and do not sin. You can be angry, just don't get into sin. Right? Do not let the sun go down on your wrath or your anger. Why? Look at verse 27. Nor give place to the devil. What is the Bible saying here? And if you read this in the whole context, chapter 4 and chapter 5 all together, and it's, 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 making this, it's making this observation. Think about this. If you're married, chances are, you, you, you've, not even chances are, definitely you've come into some disputes or disagreements with your spouse or even with your children. 
Have you ever done that and then gone to bed? Do you know what the Bible's saying here? The Bible is saying if you go to bed with that raft, what you, what's going to happen is you're giving place or topos is the, is the word place right there. To, topography is where we get our word the, from that word topos, topography. You're opening the door for the devil to get in. And what does he do? He starts, uh, he starts counseling you in, in the night with thoughts. With thoughts about how bad your spouse is, how horrible they are. They don't really love you, and they're doing wrong, and it's all, all these thoughts. And the Bible says, don't you dare go to, go to bed with that wrath. Why? Because you've just opened the door for the devil to give you bad counsel in your mind. Are you all with me? Now, let me show you an example of it in Genesis. Let's go back over to Genesis, and this is where we'll close. Are you all with me? Genesis chapter 2. Ooh, y'all. I cannot wait till we break this down because there's, remember I've told you that the devil has three main things that he uses. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And sex is one of the main, and we're not going to get into it this week. I'm just going to show you this passage and it fits with the context. But this whole thing of sex, this whole sexual perversion that is prevalent, prominent in our culture today, and particularly in the last days, homosexuality, all the stuff not even homosexuality and lesbian anymore. It's called pansexuality. Have sex with whatever, whenever, whoever I want to. And there's a reason why it's right here in Genesis. And let me show you what it is. And we're, we're going to delve into this next week. And it'll probably take me a couple weeks to show you this. But watch this. Are y'all with me? But just watch what happened here. Beginning at Genesis chapter 2, the last verse. Y'all remember God made man, pulled woman out of him, right? And... Uh, he said, this is now flesh, Adam said, this is now flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones, right? So on and so forth, right? But look at the last verse in chapter 25, after God made man. Now, the, I'm reading from the NLT. Now, the man and his wife were both naked. Look at this. But they felt no shame. Mm -hmm. Go on to verse 1. Here we go. The serpent was, was the shrewdest of all wild animals, and the Lord, uh, the Lord God had made. One day, uh, he asked the woman, the devil, Satan and the snake asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? What's the first words from the devil that's posted in the Bible? Is the devil calling God a liar. The devil's trying to get humanity to question what God really said. Finding out what do they know, questioning and calling God a liar. God didn't really say that. Y'all get it? Why? Because he has to disarm them from the word. The only way he has authority, the only way he can do any damage is to disarm you from the word. <laughs> Amen. Verse 2, of course, she says, we may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden. The woman replied, next. It's only the fruit up from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat of it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Do you all get how close that is to the truth, but not exactly? That's so important right there. Look what the devil says. You won't die, flat out lie. The, the serpent replied to the woman. Next. God knows, verse 5, that your eyes will be open and as soon as, you, as soon as you eat it, you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Next. The woman was convinced and saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. And she wanted some wisdom it would give her, pride of life. So she took some of the fruit and ate it and gave, she gave, then she gave to, uh, some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Watch this. Next. At that moment their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. Remember what we read in verse 25? They were both naked, but there was no shame, right? But now they feel shame at their nakedness, and they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Next. When, uh, verse uh, 8, when the, cool of the, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord walk, God walking in the, uh, about in the garden, so they hid, themselves, hid from God, the Lord God, among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? Notice, always know, whenever God calls, he, knows, he doesn't ask questions he don't already know the answers to. Where are you? He's giving him opportunity here. Watch this. Verse 9, verse 10. He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. Look at this. I was afraid because I was naked. Fear and shame because I'm naked. Look what God says. Who told you you were naked? 
The Lord God asked, again, remember he doesn't ask questions he don't already know the answer to. He's omniscient. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? So I want you to see here. We already see that God said they were both naked, but there was no shame. Who calls them shame? Who's whispering in their eyes, that God's in their ears, that God's mad at them because of their nakedness? When he made them naked and there was no shame. What I'm saying to you is when they rejected the word of God, now they've entered into a realm in an area of the devil's domain in darkness. Now he can lie to them. They bought the lie. When they rejected the word of God, they entered a domain of darkness where the devil can now begin to sell them the wrong thinking. That's the strategy of the devil. God said there's no shame with nakedness. And there is a key to that nakedness and sexuality that we're going to get into next week. Close your Bible. Come on, somebody. Are y'all learning? And again, scorpions, the same thing. They're, they're deadly. Scorpions, uh, I meant to say that, but scorpions are nocturnal. They're small, and there's a key there. They're very small. Some, most of them are small, but they're very small, but they can do deadly damage. Very small. What is the Bible saying here then? He's given us power over serpents and scorpions. There are some small things that can become very deadly if we don't deal with them. If you're here today, come on, anybody receive that? Isn't that good news? Now, we're going to learn. We're going to learn the antidote, and the main key is the word. The main key is getting in the word meditating on it we'll, we'll break all that down we'll learn but are y'all, have y'all learned today isn't that good news let's pray father thank you so much for your word thank you for it, that it's life to us that we're uncovering the strategies of the devil we understand that your word is a shield and a buckler it's our strength it's our protection it's our health it's our life and so we understand we've got to stay connected and have real genuine relationship with your word and not just be affiliated with it or uh but be have an intimate relationship with who you are through your word and what you've said it's our protection it's our shield it's our health it's our provision it's our sustenance and just like jesus like lord you resisted the devil and defeated him with three verses we can do the exact same thing with your word in jesus name friend if you're watching today and you've never made jesus the lord of your life can i assure you that god's not mad at you he isn't he's madly in love with you and has great things in store for you the key is receiving him as his, as your lord and understanding who he is and walking in his ways. It starts with receiving him. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, say this simple prayer, join him with me in this, meaning it from your heart. You're going to get born again today. Say this, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died and rose again from the dead just for me. You're my Lord, my Savior, my healer, my provider, my protector. You're my strength my everything i'm saved right now you said that prayer you meant it from your heart you're forever forgiven forever born again listen god's got great things in store for you we want to connect with you if you said that prayer meant it from your heart from the, for the first time would you text the word save to 336-800-8188 we want to connect with you uh if this is your first time ever watching text the word welcome welcome W-E-L-C-O-M-E to 336-203-8586. And again, we encourage you to give. If this, mes- if this church, this message is a blessing to you, sow your seed, sow your tithe. We want to get connected to you. and We want to we stay here for you. And as you give, that enables us to do it. We thank you for it. Text the word give to 336-344-7088. I declare you blessed. And all your comings and goings, where you, wherever you go, you're protected. You're safe under the shadow of the Almighty. You will, and I will save the Lord. He's our refuge, our fortress, our God, our strength, our protector, our healer, our provider. Lord, you're our everything. Listen, I can't wait to see you next time right here on Destiny live stream or right here in the building. Come